Well now, the Pimax Crystal has launched for, uh, now, and um, it probably should have been left in the oven a bit longer to cook, <laughs> yeah, but that is not the subject of today's video. We're going to save that for another one, believe me there. What today is going to be focused on is covering some bugs that are still in the crystal with how it's still kind of in a beta state, how to fix them, and then it's also some accessories which can improve the experience. Because to start with the bugs, if you don't know how to quickly fix them, some of these can be seriously detrimental to the experience, and there's a good chance one of them you may not even know it's impacting you. But... There are solutions for those of us who did decide to join this public beta testing. And most of them are quite simple fixes for otherwise infuriating problems. Pimax is actively working on improving the Crystal software stack, so hopefully they will be officially patched soon. But until then, that's what we're going to be looking at. Let's start with the workarounds and one of the biggest issues. Alright, so here we are, we're going to deal with the first um, issue, and that is uh, where when you boot up the crystal, sometimes your play space will be really kind of off. Um, in this case, it's not so that significant, the height's just a little bit wrong, but sometimes like I'm way over there, I am underneath the floor, I am way above the here, and so it, it's just a bit of a pain because some games, you really got to be in the center of your play space, and... Yeah, so very, very quick and easy way to fix this. You just go to OVR Advanced Settings, you go down to the Space Fix, you just take your controller like right here, like say I want to center my space there, and then you just click Recenter Space. There you go. And so um, if, you're, if your height is wrong, but your general play space is correct, you can just click Fix Floor and it'll do that, but Recenter Space will do both of them. So yeah. Very easy to fix. I will say, though, one important thing is you're going to want, you're probably going to want to disable the Steam VR um, chaperone and not just like the floor, not just where it shows up on the floor, because doing this, I noticed it kind of started to drift after a while. Like I have not, I don't know where it is, but like sometimes I would see it like way over there. So sometimes it would be right here, sometimes way over there. And so you can do this. Um, by going into some config files, I will show on screen right now the uh, steps and the folder you need to go to in order to reach it and what you need to edit. But that will remove the boundary on the floor. Oh, right. Uh, one more thing I forgot to mention. So um, if you want to do it without OVR advanced settings, you can try pressing the power button on the top right of the crystal. I'm not going to do it right now because it will mess up with the recording. If you press the button once, it'll put the screen to sleep. If you then press it again and kind of just move your head around like this, then it'll the crystal, when the screen turns on, it kind of recalibrates itself and tries to orient the play space. So you can try that. I It wasn't the most reliable thing for me personally, so I just stuck with the OVR advanced settings, but that's something you can try. All right, so this one was found by one of the beta testers and uh, OVR toolkit developer, Curtis. What essentially happens here is if you click apply under the games tab, even if you change literally nothing and have all of your color settings set to zero, it results in values being generated in a profile.json of the Pimax software, which completely and utterly screws with your colors and screen brightness. So now watch. Now, look what happened there. As you can see from here, what I did just now, I had my color values and everything set to zero, but now there is a bunch of numbers here that don't belong. The big thing about this, though, is it is not, I repeat, not exclusive to the crystal. It happens to every Pimax device and is a bug within the software itself. I've confirmed it happened on my 8KX, and another friend did the same, while yet another confirmed it on their 5K Super. The way you fix this is thankfully quite easy, but it is annoying. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to uh, your Windows, you're going to make sure you have under view, you're going to have show hidden files, folders, and drives, this is important. 
Then you're going to go to um, under your C drive, under your, your users, your username, app data, then local, Pimax, runtime, and then click on the profile.json. I have this opened up in here, and this is what you want to find. So basically just follow that path. And then once you have this open, you're going to set all of these values down to zero. All right, so when you're done, it should look like this. But then you have to close and reopen the Pimax software or else the software is going to remember the old values and it's going to overwrite the new ones you made. And the reason this is such a massive pain is you have to do this every single time you click and change anything under this tab. Which you need to if you want to toggle things like reprojection, on or off, or change the fovea to rendering value. And for the most part, this isn't a big deal on the crystal at this moment, though it might be with toggling DFR soon. But most notably, on something like the 8KX, you need to do this any time you change the field of view. So that is a little bit more of a significant problem since you probably will do that a decent bit. If you do have your own customized color values, as a lot of people like to do that on some of their Pimax headsets, it appears to be fine and will respect those. But the problem is, is where if you have everything at zero, that's the big major bug. The difference in between having this bug and not having this bug was really night and day for me. And honestly, this this should really be an easy bug for Pimax to fix, but it's been known about for almost two months. <laughs> so I do hope Pimax makes it a priority to fix it because I've already talked with several people who did have the bug, but they had no idea they were affected until I brought it up to them. And thirdly, we have this little bundle of problems. Because see, talking to many people, um, this has been seemingly responsible for a whole host of problems. The three main ones that I have seen solved, or at least improved, uh, simply by bypassing this and connecting it directly to the headset, the DisplayPort cable, have included tracking improvements, less dropouts and instability there, connectivity and general instability on the crystal, and then, this is a really big one, FPS being stuck at 90 hertz even when 120 is selected. So, <laughs> honestly, you don't have to remove it from the crystal like I did, but if you are having general um, instability issues, I would say one of the first things you might want to try with your troubleshooting is bypass this cursed little box here. Now, to be clear though, not everyone is going to be experiencing these issues. I had 120 hertz working fine even when I was using this, but mine ultimately died entirely. That's why I removed it. Um, but do also note that this wasn't a universal solution either. Some people still had issues even doing this. A few just couldn't make 120 hertz work even when bypassing this. And uh, But I've seen enough people help by it, I still would strongly recommend this step. And on the subject of 120 hertz mode, I have seen some people report that the fiber optic cable has generally been less stable in doing 120 hertz. But on the other hand, I have known two people who did manage to do 120 hertz on the fiber, so I, I, I don't know if it's a cable thing or what, but if you do have the fiber optic cable and can't reach 120 hertz, it may be looking in, worth looking into this and trying the 8KX style copper cable, if you have it, or go talk to support. You will know which one you have since the fiber optic cable is much thinner and only has one USB cord, while the copper is thicker and has two USB cords. And super quick, two more uh, to close out the troubleshooting section here. Firstly, Pimax, and Pimax provided me with this solution. If you have issues with the crystal rebooting itself after you try and turn it off, try disabling USB selective suspend within the Windows power plan options. For me at least, it did help reduce this problem noticeably. And secondly, if you have connectivity issues when using a multi-monitor setup, Try disconnecting one of the monitors. I've seen a few people report that issue and solution. Not, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure why it's the case, 
but it, hey, it works. I think it might be something to do with the uh, the bandwidth between the crystals, insanely high res, and the monitors. Anyway, so those are some of the more noticeable bugs I've seen, and uh, that people have been able to find solutions to at least. Um, so if you know of more and how to fix them, please do leave it in the comments. Now, very quickly, I just want to mention a couple accessories since I mentioned that uh, early in the video, I'd also cover this, um, that I have used to help my crystal work better for me and just to have a general good experience. I am not sponsored by any of these companies. I was just impressed by how much the accessories helped and uh, I wouldn't mention something I didn't feel good using myself. Firstly, I got these knuckle grips right here. These are just some Quest 2 Kiwi grips I repurposed for the crystal controllers, but, um, they did not fit natively. You might see a bunch of cuts and scissor marks I uh, here, because uh, I had to do quite a bit of DIY with that <laughs> to make it fit. But it did ultimately fit, so that is an option if you do want to use it. And I mean, look, hey, I even still have access to the uh, the charging port in the bottom here. Secondly, I have a couple mods for the HMD itself that I want to talk about. Firstly. We have this Studio Form Creative Apache strap right here. You've probably uh, seen me using it in a couple other videos. What this does, it helps further balance the weight if you find the crystal a bit front heavy. Uh, neat thing about this though is the fact that the simple design means that you can use it with a bunch of other HMDs. I've used the same one with like four different headsets and it's been a nice addition on all of them. The next one is some back padding on the crystal. It will look like this. It's designed for the Quest 2 default strap to better and more comfortably grip your head. And it works amazingly on the crystal here though. Um, the extra padding on the back, which I did find a little bit thin, it means I can tighten the headset without it mo uh, feeling uncomfortable in the back and like it's digging into my skull. While the general design helps to get a more firm and secure fit when combined with that. I don't know if you can see it quite well, but it's on right here. Then finally, we got what I would consider optional if you're happy with your current facial interface, but I like it, so I'm gonna mention it. Um, which is a 11 millimeter Tan B Vive Pro facial interface. And not only is this PU leather for those who do prefer that to foam, it fits the crystal's gasket near perfectly and is a much more comfortable thing than using the stock foam, at least for me. I did have to play with the fit a little bit, but was super happy with it once I dial it, dialed it in. I also did try a 6mm um, face foam, and that did work if you prefer that. But 11 millimeters was much more comfortable and I get full FOV on it anyway, so I didn't feel the need to use thinner. Um, but do note, just be careful if you decide to buy the OG Vive style foam because it doesn't quite perfectly fit with the crystal gasket. But the thing is, when you combine all of these together, it makes for a very tight fit good fit that is comfortable, honestly the most comfortable um, VR setup I think I've used uh, by a long shot, and I feel like I could just use this forever. Though I, I will note I have not tried the pan uh, Pancake HMDs for an extended period of time, like the Pico 4 Quest Pro, so I can't comment on those unfortunately. I am stuck in the last gen bulky headsets. Um, but look, I can swing my head around a lot here, and it barely moves. The most it moves is probably bumping from the back of the chair there. I, I don't know how well that's going to show up in the video. I think that's important since I found wobbling a little bit of an issue sometimes, and I have seen that reported by some people as an issue they have with Pimax now and again. But this... It is impressively stable. I've generally seen positive opinions from other people who tried some of these too. I've talked to a couple people who tried some similar ones, though not the exact setup I have. Um, and so, but depending on your face shape, the experience might vary a little bit. But I do think most people will find an improvement of some manner using these though. I will include links to the description down below to everything mentioned in this video for those who do feel like getting some. But that is it for now though. If anyone has more accessory recommendations for the crystal, leave them down below in the comments. Um, full crystal review is coming eventually, where I'm going to go into more detail about everything here. And uh, But firstly, I have a 4090 benchmark video I'm working on, and that's going to be covering performance. So yeah, if you stick around to see that, I will see you there. Later.